you're from Canada. Yeah, we don't really care. <laughs> it is good to be here, man. I, uh, I'm down here from Canada. That's where I'm from. Thank you, thank you very much. Wow, that was a very American response. Oh, you're from Canada. Yeah, we don't really care. <laughs> uh, I just ate at the Cracker Barrel for the first time the other day. Yeah, not because I never wanted to, just because I wasn't sure if I was allowed to. I'm gonna let that simmer for the slow people. Right? Cause it's the Cracker Barrel, man. It's an interesting restaurant. I walk in the front door and I gotta fight my way through a yard sale. All right? Is the Cracker Barrel moving? Looks like they're trying to get rid of all their trash. Just a bunch of random stuff. Just ice skates, wind chimes, and Kenny Rogers albums. You can't even find that combination at a Goodwill. All right? I sat down to order myself a country breakfast, man. Came at Grits. You guys know about the Grits? Yeah. Oh, man. It's my first time eating hillbilly hummus. <laughs> I haven't had anything that tasty since my first grade paper mache class. <laughs> Just breakfast with a side of arts and crafts. If you let it sit, it turns into a concrete aggregate. Just take it home and regrow up my kitchen backsplash. I had to wash it down with sweet tea. I do love me some sweet tea. That's a good drink right there. Sweet tea? Oh, we don't have that in Canada. Try explaining to my friends, like it's kind of like iced tea. But then you add sugar. <laughs> so you can almost chew the drink. <laughs> it's the deliciousness of liquid diabetes. I'm never moving home. I'm dying in America, happy with swollen ankles. I don't live in Canada anymore. I live, uh, I live in Atlanta, Georgia now. That's where I live now. I moved there because they had a Six Flags amusement park. That is the only research I did. <laughs> Nobody told me they built it right in the middle of the ghetto. The scariest ride is walking from the parking lot. <laughs> My brother joined me late. He's like, I didn't know Six Flags had valet service. Like they don't, you just got carjacked. <laughs> it's a big difference growing up in Canada. We get snow every year, man. You guys get snow, you can live in it. It doesn't affect you, right? You can drive. I moved to Atlanta, Georgia. They get a half an inch of snow. People go into a state of panic. <laughs> We got one inch of snow a couple years ago, shut down the entire city. You know how funny that was to a Canadian? I watched people abandon their vehicles. We'll just buy a new one when the snow melts. You realize it's gonna be 70 degrees tomorrow, right? Can't hear you. I'm way to the grocery store to pick up 15 loaves of bread. Gotta make sure I'm prepared for this apocalypse. Plus, tonight will be a perfect night to get drunk because my children are trapped in school. <laughs> like a free babysitter. Go dogs! <laughs> My brother actually just got caught in a DUI checkpoint recently, man. He texted me. What he wanted to send was, hey, man, just got pulled over by the cops. They want to test me for a DUI. But what he ended up sending was, they want to test me for an IUD. <laughs> and I don't think I've laughed that hard in three months. Because that is female birth control. <laughs> I go, how do you feel? He goes, I'm pretty confident. I was like, I'm pretty confident too. <laughs> He's like, I only had one beer. I was like, bro, if they're gonna test you for an IUD, you might wanna have a couple more. <laughs> I don't know what the procedure involves, but it sounds invasive. <laughs> that is a great laugh. That is the kind of laugh you don't wanna hear in a pitch black in the middle of the night. You know what I mean? when, you're, when you're all tucked in the bed, you know, you're about to fall asleep. <laughs> Oh my gosh, Chucky's here. Chucky is under the bed. That's a great laugh. Uh, it sounds like somebody's pulling your string. Uh, I like you. You're a great laugher. Thank you for sitting up front. My brother actually, uh, he's got the most kids in my family. He's, uh, my, he's LeVar, he's my best friend, he's 40 years old. He's been married four times. He's got four kids. We call him the impulse shopper. <laughs> he's got one kid from every marriage, which is cool, but here's a kicker. Each of the wives was a different ethnicity. So it looks less like he's had four failed relationships and more like he's a philanthropist <laughs> who's adopted kids from four different continents. <laughs> His family photo looks like an advertisement for Old Navy. That's awesome. 
He's always harping on me because I don't have any children. I'm the only one in the family that doesn't have kids. Uh, but here's the thing. It's not that I don't like children, all right? It's just that I don't want to give my kids the best years of my life. <laughs> I want to give them what's left, you know what I mean? <laughs> I want to be so far past my prime that if we play catch, I'll probably blow it a hip. <laughs> I want to be a burden. If they're going to get an inheritance, they're going to earn it, all right? <laughs> See, 15, you don't know anything about that, man. You're 15 years old, you wake up in the morning, you just spring out of bed. You don't assess your body or nothing. It's good morning. 74 can't do that. That guy go to bed perfectly fine, wake up, torn ACL. All because he had a dream that he was running. So you didn't even win the race. <laughs> uh, it's the joys of getting older, man. We're all, that's one thing we all have in common. We're all aging, man. Men and women alike, man. Anybody celebrating a birthday by chance in here? You, oh, we got one? That's cool. How you doing, sir? You doing all right? <laughs> What's your name, my friend? Ammon. Ammon? Ammon? Call you Jim, all right? So, <laughs> uh, that's a cool name. I don't. Amen. Is you sure it's not Amen? <laughs> that would make more sense in this state. <laughs> Was that too far? You guys can't laugh and then take the laugh back. Huh? <laughs> oh no, you can't do it. No, 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 no. It's like an email. You already mailed it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> this is fun, man. Thanks for coming out on your birthday, bro. It's a cool birthday. You get to hang out with some cool people, enjoy some laughs. It's a lot better than my last birthday. I went on a field trip to the gastroenterologist. <laughs> Does anybody know what they do? <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> Here's the thing. They thought I had an ulcer, right? So in order for them to check that, they had to, um... <laughs> 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 They put a camera of a place. It's attached to 137 feet of fiber optic wiring and an air compressor. I don't want to frighten anybody. They don't bring the equipment to the equation to the second appointment. They want to take it slow, get to know you better. <laughs> First appointment is a regular office visit. You go in there, they ask you a bunch of questions, and the doctor throws a curveball. He's like, yeah, I'm gonna need a stool sample. You got like a to-go cup or something, Doc? Because right now is not a good time for me. I don't feel as I'm going to give you what you need at this present moment. He's like, no, I'll take the sample. I was like, you'll take the sample, but it's still inside. He's like, what I need you to do is lay on the table, face the wall, pull your drawers down while he snaps on a rubber glove. And he gets the sample. Right? And then he hands you a pamphlet after. I was like, I don't want your pamphlet, sir. You just penetrated me. As far as I'm concerned, we're now in a relationship. I'll be back at 5.30. We're going to the Cracker Barrel. Right? But I couldn't go back at 5.30 because you got to spend the rest of the day prepping, which means you can't eat any more solid food. You got to take a laxative. I'm like, no problem. I've taken some X-lax before. Not a big deal. Oh, no. They give you a prescription to a laxative. You know you're in trouble when you go to the pharmacist. You're like, hey, man, can you feel that? Yeah. <laughs> what flavor did you want your liquid exorcism to be? <laughs> and he comes back with like two and a half gallons of this stuff. You take it home, you pound it back. It tastes horrible. It's got like a, like a weird consistency to it. And then you, and then you just wait. <laughs> And don't be brave. Don't try to make a quick trip to the Walmart because your schedule's been set. <laughs> and it works different for everybody. I didn't think it was gonna work for me. Waited two hours, nothing happened. Three hours, nothing. So I went to sleep. <laughs> Which in hindsight probably wasn't the smartest of ideas. You ever been woken up by <gasps> That's some scary stuff right there. <laughs> It's the middle of the night, I'm tired, I'm trying to talk myself out of it. It's like, I was gonna lay here for a little longer, just pinch my butt cheeks together. We can do this in the morning. It's like, no, you're right, we'll do this right now. You jump up out of bed only to find out the structural integrity of your seal had been compromised. See, they gotta waddle to the bathroom like a gingerbread man. And that's where you set up base camp. 
And I hope you know a Sherpa, you're gonna be there for a while. I blacked out twice. The second time I woke up, I couldn't feel my legs. I thought I went so hard, I paralyzed myself. But I'd just been sitting there so long that the circulation to my extremities was cut off. I couldn't feel my legs, so they fell asleep. I've never been happy to feel the excruciating pain of pins and needles as I tap my feet back to consciousness. Basically, what I'm trying to say is, happy birthday, amen. Just, just took the long run that way. <laughs> uh, that's it. And I here with your girlfriend, and wife. How you doing, miss? How'd you meet her? Yeah. We're gonna go back to the creepy old guy. <laughs> it's amazing what you do for somebody when you first meet them, though, right? When you're in that wooing stage, like you'll do stuff you wouldn't typically do to impress them. That's just human nature. Like my ex-girlfriend was a vegetarian. When I met her, I stopped eating meat. And I'm not proud of that. I'm just saying, like, I know I did it for her because as soon as she dumped me, I couldn't get to Wendy's fast enough. I was like, yeah, give me five Baconators. I'm trying to cover up this heartache with some angina. I didn't even eat them all. I just went home, got naked, rubbed the patties on my chest. Just, just waxing on and off like a heartbroken karate kid. She wanted to change me too, man. She wanted me to cut off all my hair because she no longer found long hair on guys attractive, which was weird to me because she had really busted feet. <laughs> and I'm not a feet person, but I never once tried to coerce her to go get work done on her foot hooves. <laughs> I could have easily been like, yo, let's go get your reshoe. Secretariat. <laughs> let's go meet up with your buddies Hidalgo and Sea Biscuits. <laughs> Got some sugar cubes in it for you. Come on, yeah! <laughs> this laugh is amazing. <laughs> a lot of people ask me how I got into comedy. I think that's a fair question. My mom is my inspiration, man. My mom is a very funny woman, very tough lady. When I was eight years old, I watched my mom kick off her boyfriend's leg. This is a factual story. For a short span of time, my mom dated a one-legged Guatemalan man named Mac and Mac liked to drink. This particular day, he had one too many beers, he put his hands on her, and she kicked off his leg. <laughs> it was like FIFA soccer, the striker. <laughs> and I watched his leg shoot across the kitchen, and as he fell, she yelled out timber. <laughs> and my mom is not that clever, which leads me to believe she had been planning that for quite some time. <laughs> This is hilarious looking back at it, but at the time, this is very traumatizing to a kid because I didn't know he had a prosthetic limb. I thought she was a superhero, man. Captain Lumberjack or something. I told my mom I was gonna tell that story on stage. She was like, no problem. Just don't forget the part where after I beat him up, I threw his leg down the basement steps. He had to crawl downstairs to walk back up. Ain't that something? She wanted his wife wet the bed till I was 11. I was terrified, man. I got a complaint on that joke recently, man. You ever notice that the people who seem to be the most offended typically have the least right to be? You ever notice that? Everybody wants to be offended for somebody else nowadays. It's the world we live in. This lady came up to me, she's like, just stop doing that joke. It's offensive. I was like, well, it's not meant to be offensive. It's a story from my childhood. Are you an amputee? And she said, no. I go, oh, do you know some amputees? And she was like, no. Do you at least repaint handicapped parking spots? Like, <laughs> I don't know where your connection is to this material. And as I'm talking to her, this British guy comes out of the club and he sees me, he goes, oh, it's the comedian. He goes, the mate, you know the joke you do about your mom and the leg? I go, yeah, I know the joke. He goes, bloody brilliant. And he pulled up his pants, he had a metal prosthetic. He goes, mate, I laughed so hard, I almost lost this. <laughs> And I just looked at the lady, it's like, I don't know what to tell you, ma'am. I mean, if he's cool with it, then your argument doesn't really have a leg to stand on. <laughs> and then I died, and I walked away. Just... I was in England for almost a whole month, man. I don't know if anybody's ever been to England before, but if you like the taste of food, don't go to England. <laughs> it tastes like the weather, real dreary. <laughs> I was like, how do you take over a quarter of the planet and not learn any recipes? <laughs> you guys occupied India for hundreds of years, didn't bring back no spices? <laughs> Everything's gotta be made with two tablespoons of sadness and a dash of I should've went to Italy. 
You know, I'm allowed to make fun of England because I'm from Canada. <laughs> and that is our baby daddy. <laughs> he helped make us, but he wasn't around much growing up. <laughs> That flight back is no joke, though. That's an eight-hour flight for me. Eight hours, that's a long flight. I don't like really long flights because I always get sick. I always get like a head cold. Some people attribute it to the recycled air, but I know it's because I'm not successful. <laughs> I'm not sitting in first class with the healthy people. That's my theory. If you can afford those seats, you can afford vitamins, all right? If you're spending that kind of money, you have something to live for. That's my theory. <laughs> This is how I know the immune systems are better in first class. On my last Delta flight, they were serving warm nuts as a snack in first class. Warm nuts. Warm nuts. You can't even say the word peanut in economy anymore without somebody going into anaphylactic shock. And these fools are roasting chestnuts on an open fire? Just giggling with pad thai crumbs in their beard? Doing lines of almond dust? while everybody with allergies still has to walk by them, and that walk is just long enough for your throat to close up to remind you that Mother Nature's coming for you. <laughs> That's where I want to sit. I want to sit at the front next to Wolverine. Like I said, at the back of the plane with everybody who doesn't believe in vaccinations and learned how to cough from a Rottweiler. You ever, you ever see one of these people? Just, ah! Oh! Just human dandelion spores everywhere. Ah! Oh! Is this your first day in the new body? You seem pretty taken back by a rather rudimentary bodily function. They're always in the middle seat, dude. They're always in the middle seat. I always get the window, so now I gotta like push my face up against the wall. And every time they cough, I exhale. Just, just make like a force field of breath. Just, I'm not buying what you're selling. You ever hear somebody cough from like down here? Sounds like grinding gears. You're like, oh, I'm not a doctor, but I'm pretty sure that's Ebola. All right, I got an Ebola neighbor. I gotta jump on the GoGo in-flight Wi-Fi so I can Google how long it takes for that disease to start working because I'm a hypochondriac and my elbow's itchy. <laughs> this guy sniffled the whole flight, man, sniffled. Eight hours. At one point I was like, hey man, I got some tissue. You need some tissue? He's like, no, I'm okay. This guy had a snail trail from his index finger to his clavicle. By the time he left the flight, it looked like he was wearing an Adidas tracksuit. That guy, that's the reason measles is a thing again. That dude. You guys know that? Measles? Apparently, we're bringing back the greatest hits. What's next? Leprosy? Look on the bright side, Jimmy. You didn't want to take piano lessons anyways. I don't feel as though you guys gave me what I deserved on that punchline. <laughs> you see, sir, when you get leprosy, you lose the motor functions in your fingers. <laughs> it's tough to play piano when you can't move your fingers. <laughs> A piano is an instrument, huh? <laughs> I don't mind explaining these jokes, but you're slowing down my show, buddy. You gotta come to all my shows. You're the greatest. I don't know. I'm so tired of flying, man. You know what the problem is? You don't get to choose who you sit next to. That's the problem, you know? Well, I, what my, I had one flight where the dude next to me thought I was a terrorist, man. And he was very vocal about it. I guess that's what I look like when I'm uncomfortable, sweaty, and angry. This, this just screams Taliban right here. Just my jihad eyebrows. And it's funny to me, because I'm from Canada. And I'm not saying there's not Canadian terrorists. But there's not, all right? <laughs> real tough getting your demands met with hockey sticks and maple syrup. <laughs> this guy was a real jerk about it too, man. Got on his phone, he's like, yeah, I'm on the plane. That was doing well till he sat me next to a bloody Arab. So then I got on my phone and I was like, <laughs> five minutes, boom! <laughs> Do you believe in Allah? <laughs> this is going to be a magnificent flight. I used my air miles. I bought my ticket for $9. It's a very good price for 72 virgins. It's like 12 cents a wife. You cannot beat that. That's how you say hashtag loophole. And then I took off my shoe and held it to my chest. These are 
the Nike Air Infidels. Just do it, Mohammed. <laughs> I'm not allowed to fly in Delta anymore. But <laughs> you guys have been a lot of fun, man. Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys. Thank you. Thank you, man. Thank you. Local man robs Wendy's with alligator. We're the alligator boys now. And the lady, they sit in the bank, she be going, Mom, Mom. <laughs>